That's a miracle. <laughs> no, no miracle. Just golf. The Sevi way. To make this video, Sevi travelled eastward to Dubai on the Arabian Gulf. Spectacular and exotic in equal parts, it was a perfect place to display the full range of talents that have made him perhaps the world's greatest golfer. This video deals with a short game, whose final most vital 100 yards, where the greatest part of the game is played, and where for most amateurs, the biggest frustrations lie. For Seve, a master of the short game, with superb touch and unrivaled imagination, it was his chance to explain the expertise and technique that lie behind his skills. Although Seve came to Dubai for the serious business of golf, he did have a few moments to enjoy some of the delights and surprises this small country has to offer. The real pleasure that Seve takes in the sport he loves is only matched by the instinctive ball skills which underline his mastery of the game of golf. The convivial atmosphere of Dubai provided the perfect setting for Seve to demonstrate his extraordinary talent. All right. It is a talent that when applied to the challenges the game has to offer, produces sheer golfing perfection. Hi, I am Seve Ballesteros. Welcome to this video. I hope I can pass on some of the experience and secrets I have gained over the past 15 years as a professional. 15 years during which time Seve has become an international star with five major championships and countless other tournament victories behind him. He's also established a bond between himself and the golfing public as not just a winning golfer, but as a charismatic figure who plays a brand of thrilling golf that captures the very spirit of the game. Got the pace magnificently. With one of the shortest putts that ever won a championship. Seve's always been thought of as a natural, as if he was born with a sand wedge in his hand and a perfect swing to match, but it isn't true. Becoming a champion wasn't easy. It was the result of long hours, hard work, dedication and commitment, and it's the lessons learnt along the way that make up this programme. This video won't make you a champion, but definitely will make you a better golfer. And who knows, maybe even to help you play shots like this. The Emirates Golf Club in Dubai is an oasis carved from the desert, and it's a fine test for any golfer. Although this video is about short game, we first have to learn the fundamentals, not only to apply the basics to our short game, but also in order to get closer to the green in the first place. The grip is the single most important factor for any golfer in producing a good consistent swing. Let me show you how to do it. Now, let's start with the left hand. Here we have the club. Here we have the left hand. You put the club right there. You make contact with those two fingers and then the rest is the palm, then the thumb goes into the middle of the club right there. Now we have the right hand. This finger goes on top of that one and the rest of the fingers go straight into the club. This is the one we call the overlapping grip. This is the one I use. Now also we have the interlocking grip which is the one that Mr. Nicholas used. This is the only difference. The finger, instead of going on the, to the top, it goes inside and everything else is the same. So it's after you. You can choose either one, but make sure you have the right grip and you feel comfortable. So the overlapping grip is the one that I use. That's where your little finger goes on top of the index finger. With the interlocking grip, the little finger goes between the middle finger and the index finger. Then, also you have to remember that the left hand has to come naturally into the grip. Don't turn the hand too much this way or that way. It has to come natural. Like that, it's like you check the hand to somebody else. Go straight there into the club. And also you have to make sure that this B, it goes into the middle of the chest. And also 
you should be able to see two knuckles. If you can do that, that's the correct grip. Next one, the right hand. Also, it has to come natural into the club, like the same thing you check the, the hand of uh, somebody else. Straight in the, into the club, and also you should be able to see that B between the uh, right shoulder and the middle of the chest. And also, you have to be able to look at only one knuckle. What happens is, if you see more than two knuckles on the, left, on the left hand, that means that the grip is too strong on the left side. And the result of that is that you hook the, the, uh, you, you hook the ball, you cross the club too quick. If you don't see any knuckles or perhaps only one, the result of that, the hand it will come naturally at the impact. And what happens is the club face it will come open and then it will be a slice. So make sure that the B of the right hand aims between the shoulder and the chest and also you must see one knuckle. On the left hand, the B, it should be to the middle of the chest and also make sure that you see two knuckles. If you can do that, you will have the right grip. Let me give you one tip. You have to hold the club with enough pressure to control it, but don't strangle the club because the result of that is that you will create too much tension on the forearms and what happens, you will lose the club speed and you will swing too fast. Next, let's look at the stance. We start with the feet. The feet should be as wide as the shoulders. Then we have to bend the knees a little bit, not too much, just a little bit. Then the upper body, also a little bit. Be careful with the belly, don't go too much this way. It will make you difficult to turn. So make sure the belly is inside too, right? Then we have the ball position. The ball position should be between the middle and the left heel, all right? Then we have to find out how far we should be away from the ball. That's very simple. All we have to do is that after we have the setup, the previous setup, we extend the left hand, and then we put the club, and there's how far you should be from the ball. Okay? Then we put the right hand. Now, it's important to be a square with the feet, with the knees, with the hip, and with the shoulders. I'm going to show you how. We have three clubs right here that will help you to address the ball square to the target. The first, I lay down along the line on my feet, pointing towards the target. The second, I put down by the ball parallel to the first club. And the third club is to find the position of the ball in relation to my feet. This is a good tip that will help you to practice in the right way. But after the setup, there's one important thing, that's how to aim. Let me show you how to do it. I stay behind the ball and I try to find something about three feet in front of the ball like in this case, a piece of grass. And then I try to visualize a line with those two points straight to the target. I stay behind, I can see the line, and then I go into the ball. That way, I put the club face, so I have the line right there, then I put the feet. Then I look at the target, and there's the correct way to aim. Once we have the setup, one more thing to do. When you are over the ball, make sure you waggle the club a little bit and also make sure you move the body at the same time. 
because what happens is that if you stay still too much over the ball, too long, everything gets too tight. And the problem with that is that it will be very difficult to take the club back. It will happen too quick sometimes and it will be no coordination. So be aware of that. A few waggles, move your body, and then hit it. Well, that looks all right. Now let's go and try for real. Okay, let's go out to the course, to the 17th fairway at part four. Let me show you how to play from 100 yards to the green. Let's see what we can do here, putting those basic principles into effect with the full shot from around 100 yards out. That's usually a sand wedge for me, but it may be a pitching wedge for you. Ah, well, that's not too bad. Let's have a look at the action one more time. Here we are putting into practice all the things I have been working on before, the correct grip, the posture, stance and alignment. But practice is also important in order to improve the tempo of your swing. The shot I'm playing here is a full shot, just like any other, but you can see it must be played nice and easy. Good tempo is as important in golf as it is on the dance floor. And sometimes Seve gets the rhythm dead right. Well, they don't always work like that. But now let's look at some of the situations you will have to face from lies other than in the fairway. What we have here is a problem shot for many people, the long bunker shot. But don't despair, here is how you can play. It's actually like a shot from the fairway, but there are a few important differences. First, get a firm footing in the sand. Waggle the club over the ball and make sure you don't touch the sand. Play the ball a little further back in your stance than normal. Keep your weight more on your left side to encourage the steeper arc necessary to catch the ball before the sand. As you can see, this shot stops quickly. And remember, don't be afraid to make a full swing at the ball. This time we have avoided the sand, but we are in the rough. The technique for hitting this shot is much the same, but you have to take account of how the ball is lying and how it will react. If the ball is sitting up, you may get a flyer. Then, because grass is between the club and the ball, the ball will fly further and will run more on landing. So, watch out. But here we have a pretty good lie in the rough, so the ball settles down quite nicely on landing. However, if the ball is lying down, you may need to go deeper, so you may prefer to take a pitching wedge instead of a sand wedge because from that situation the ball has the tendency to fly less. And so remember one thing, the ball will run much farther on landing from this line. Let's now move closer to the green and back into the fairway. So, let's try from 50 yards away. There are two types of shots that we can use. One is the one we can use straight 
into the paint, which land nice, high and soft. And two is the one what we call the punch, which it will hit one pitch on the green, and then on the second one, it will bite. For the basic pitch shot, I play the ball forward in my stance. The club face is set slightly open to the target. I take my normal grip, but the hands, like the club, are just inside my left leg. I have my weight about 60% on my left side, and I take an open stance. Note that my feet, knees, hips, and shoulders are in line above each other and the target. The swing path for this shot is from out to in, and it is steep in order to promote the necessary height in the shot. Note that when I take the club back, the angle between my left arm and the club head form a right angle. Do not allow the club face to become close at the top. I move down to the ball. My right knee kicks in towards the target. Do not roll your wrist or collapse your left side. The club face should be open and looking towards your face just after the impact. And if you have done all this properly, the ball will sit down nice and softly. Now let's look at the punch shot. We have to change a few things. One is the ball position. Instead of being on the left heel, it goes nearly to the right heel. That means back to the right foot. That way, right here. Then the way it goes more to the left side, a little bit more. Right there. And then I take the club a little bit more steeper. Straight up in the air, right there. That means that on the downswing, the club, it will come into the ball more vertical and down with less loft. And the result of that, the ball will fly lower. Still, the club face, it has to be open through the swing. Everything else is the same. Let's have a look at those two shots again. Because I have played the punch shot with the ball back in my stance, the ball will fly lower and spend less time in the air than with the pitch, as you can see here. Now we have the pitch and run, a shot you can play from between 25 and 75 yards out. Using the fringe as your reference point, Choose the club you need to carry the ball into the green. It also depends on how much green you have to work with. On this occasion, I will go with the wedge. But, for example, I used an 8 iron from Father Out against Arnold Palmer in 1983 at the World Match Play Championship. To play this shot, stand tall at the dress, grip down the shaft a bit, have the ball about in the center of your stance, which should be square. The swing is short and is more arms than hands. There is no check on the shot. The ball will roll and roll on landing all the way up to the flag. Remember here, have your hands ahead of the ball at address and keep your left side firm throughout impact. For our next shot, let's go to the spectacular 10th, where the green is very well protected by the big bunker. I'd like to show you one of the most difficult shots in golf. We call it the floater. Let me show you how to do it. First of all, I open the club face. Then I move the ball a little bit forward, more or less to the left heel of the left feet. Then I put my weight a little bit more on the right side to create more loft on the club. 
Also, I have my hands behind the ball too to create more, even more loft on the club face. And then I take the club straight upright back and outside the line. And then I go down into the ball and I try to keep my right hand as much as possible under and also inside the line. And also I have to say that it's important to hit it hard. Don't be worried about hitting the ball too hard because the ball will never go too far. Okay? Let's have a look. <laughs> All right. Now we have a bad lie. The ball is sitting down in a divot. Let me show you how to play that shot. It's very much the same than the one we played before, the one we call the floating shot. It's a few things that we have to change. One is that we have to hit a little bit more behind, like in the bunker shot. And then two, we have to take the club a little bit more outside and then coming into the ball across the line but we have to make sure that we go deep enough to get under the ball. Don't forget that. Let's have a look. Every player goes once in a while into the bunker, so don't be worried about that. With the right technique, it should never be difficult to get out of the bunker. The difficulty is to get close to the hole. The 8th green at the Emirates Club has many bunkers, so it's the best place to show you all kinds of shots from the bunker. Most people find the bunkers very difficult, but it's not really that way. One reason that the bunker doesn't have to be such a bad place is that we have a club, the sun wedge, especially designed to get us out. So we have the sun wedge. The difference between this club and the rest is that this one has more loft, that will help you to get the ball up in the air, and also the sole is, is thicker and is round. That will give you a better chance to get throughout the sun. And also, the length of the shaft is shorter. Let me explain to you the whole setup. The reason because we must have the uh, cloud face open is because you will get a better release throughout the sun. All right? Then the reason because we do this in the bunker is because we're looking for a solid stance because in the bunker it's very important to stay still. Then the toll you must aim to the left because that will give you a better chance to go throughout the shot. Also, everything is aiming to the left or square because in the bunker you don't need to turn like in you do in the normal shots, but you have to release everything to the left, right? Then the weight on the left side is important because also that will make you stay still over the ball and also it will give you a better chance to take the club a little bit more straight up or pride. Okay, the hands must be in front because that will help you on the takeaway to open the club face, which is fundamental in the bunker. Let's play the shot, but now, first of all, let me explain to you a couple more things. You have to think about how much you have to hit behind the ball. It will be about an inch or an inch and a half. And then you have to control the distance by the speed of the club uh, face. Now we have the feet, the knees, the hips, and the shoulders, everything all square but aiming to the left. That will make you swing across the line with the club face open is what we need. 
Then on the takeaway, we have to make sure that the club face is open on the top. That way. This is a square, this is close. Make sure it's open. The tall of the, of the grip, it has to aim between the ball and the feet. And then on the downswing, the tall of the grip, it has to come to the central of the body and square with the ball, with the open club face right there. And then through, you have to release a little bit, but the right hand, it has to be open that way. Don't close the right hand because what happens is that if you do that, you will rotate the club. That means you will close the club face and you will get over spin. So make sure that throughout the swing, the secret is to keep open the club face all the time. And you can do that only with the right hand under. And then you release a little bit, but under, always under, and looking at the hole. All right? Let's play the shot and see what happens. Keep the club face open at the address and throughout the swing. Do not let your right hand roll over at the impact. Hit the sand behind the ball, aim left of the target and release throughout the ball. Make sure you have a firm stance and have your hands ahead of the ball and your weight on your left side at the address. The speed of the club face will control how far the ball goes. And remember, let the sand wedge do the job for which it was designed. You don't have to swing too hard. The loft and the sole of the sand wedge will get the ball out for you. Let's talk about how much we have to hit behind the ball. I am going to draw a line about an inch and a half behind the ball. This is how much you have to hit behind. Of course, Drawing the line is not, it's not correct because in the tournament it will, get, it will cost you two shots penalty, but for practice it's a good recommendation, okay? Then you have to look at the ball. Also, you have to look behind the ball. And also you have to hold the club above the sand and where you're supposed to hit. Not, not right at the ball, just behind where we're supposed to hit, okay? And then, to control the distance, we have to control the distance by the speed of the club face. Not, not hitting more behind or less sand. Just always take the same amount of sand, but control the distance with the club face, all right? Let's hit. One of the most difficult shots in golf is that 35-yard bunker shot. Now we have the sand wedge and the nine iron. I'm going to show you how to use those two clubs, all right? Let's start first with the sand wedge. Okay. To do that, we use the same fundamentals. The only thing is different is that instead of having the club face so much open, we make it the club face nearly a square. Then, instead of hitting the ball two inches behind, we try to hit the ball a little less, let's say one inch. And then we make a full swing with the same fundamentals. The club face should be square rather than open. And remember, with this shot, to hit perhaps only one inch behind the ball. Other than that, the shot is the same as before. Now, let me show you a different way. Maybe this way you find a little easier. Let's say we have a, a reasonable uh, good lie. All right, we can also use a normal chip and run like uh, we can do from the fairway. Everything is the same. All we have to do is look at the ball, stay still, throughout the swing and just make a normal chip. Also, we can use the nine iron as a normal sandwich. 
All right, everything is the same, but we have to aim a little bit more to the left because with the nine iron, we will spin the ball a little bit more across, left to right. So that's why we have to aim more to the left. And then everything is the same. Cloud face hopping, the whole body hopping. We hit also behind. And then we hit a normal shot. This shot, I use it normally, for example, if the green is uphill and sometimes against the wind. Because with the sand wedge, you can always get too much spin. And with the chipping, it's always very difficult to adjust the distance. So either way, you choose the one you, you feel much more easy. Play every bunker shot the same basic way. To alter the length of the shot, just change the speed of the swing. Unfortunately, we not always get a good lie in the bunkers. So let's start with the difficult ones. Now we have a downhill lie. Okay. Everything is more or less about the same, except that you move the ball a little bit more to the right foot. Then you keep the weight a little bit more to the left side. Also the upper body, instead of being a little behind like a normal shot, you move it a little bit ahead also. Then you cock your wrist, you open the cloth face up, and then you go down, and also you have to remember that the body has to follow a little bit the shot. Don't stay behind, because what happens if you stay behind, you will hit too far behind the ball, or you will top it. So make sure you try to follow a little bit the ball with the body. Eh? Let's try and see what happens. Play the ball of your right foot, keep your weight on your left side and allow your body to follow through with the shot. Don't forget, on this situation you will always get an extra over spin. So make sure where's the pin position and make sure also you pitch the ball way short, otherwise you will be long. Another common problem in the bunker is that uh, what we call a berry lie or a fry egg, whatever you prefer. Okay, let's talk about that. The stance is, uh, is the same as a normal shot. The whole body is more or less the same, but the cloud face, instead of being open, it has to be a square. The reason for that is, is because the ball is deep and we have to go deep also. So, then, we have to take the club straight up in the air, we have to cock the wrist as much as we can, and then we have to go down and under the ball as much as we can. Also, we have to hit two inches behind, right? Then make sure that throughout the swing you stay down, don't go up, because many people think that by going up, the ball will go up also. It's not that way, it's the opposite. You have to keep down as much as you can. Let's try. Address the ball with the club face square rather than open. The swing is an upright one, so make sure to cock your wrist and stay down throughout the impact. The club will get the ball up and out for you. And remember, from this kind of light, be aware of what happened. You always get an extra roll. Another difficult shot in bunker is the one uphill. This is the one we have right here. Okay, basically, what we have to change is the weight. We've been talking before the down slope. Now we're talking about the up slope. Down slope, as I say before, is the weight is on the left side. On this case, is the opposite. The weight is on the on the right side because we in, in the bunker we should always play with the low level, all right? So the weight it has to be on the right side. Then the club face also open. Everything is the same. 
but also we have to hit the ball a little bit extra because from here we will get the ball straight up in the air and it will land in, on the green just and will stop quickly. So make sure you hit a little extra speed on the club face and also make sure you carry the ball all the way into the pen because from here there's no way you will get the roll, all right? Let's try. It's quite a good shot. Also remember, when you hit the ball, make sure you stay behind. Don't follow the shot too much. Otherwise, you will get too deep into the sand. Make sure you stay behind. For Seve in his early days, this is one of the shots he's almost too much practice playing. Right up the face, an awkward one. Just the sort you don't want. About 45 yards. And he gets it out very well indeed. Let me give you one tip. Many people hear that they have to open the club face. And what happened? From there, which is so square, they move the club face that way, but also they move the grip. That is not right. Make sure that when you open the club face from square to open, keep the, origi the original position on the grip, all right? Because what happens is if you go from there to open the club face and then you move the grip, at the impact, the grip will come to his original position. That means the club face, it will be square, which is not good for the bunker shot. Be aware of that. Let's talk now about the ball below the feet. In this situation, the first thing we have to do is that we have to try to find a comfortable position. Now we have to wild the stance and grip the club at the very end. By doing that, it will be much easier to reach the ball. Otherwise, if we stay with a normal stance and a normal grip, it will be very difficult to reach the ball, so be aware of that. Then, because the, the lie, we have to aim a little bit to the left, because the tendency is to push the ball a little bit to the right. So make sure of that too. All right, let's try. Let's talk now about the ball above the feet. It's very simple. It's just the opposite as the other one, the ball below the feet. All you have to do is that you have to choke the club shorter. You have to narrow your stance instead of too wild. And then you have to aim a little bit to the right because from this position, the tendency is to pull the ball to the left. So be aware of that. Easy. Let's have another look at that one from a different angle. And do you know what? It still doesn't go in. Sometimes you may find it better to use the pattern from the bunker. For example, if the leap of the bunker is low. If the leap is high or grassy, the ball will never get out. Also, the putter is a good choice if the pen is on the very front part of the green, because using the sand wedge, we will not be able to stop the ball. When you're using the putter in the bunker, you have to remember the sand is a little bit slower than the grass, so make sure you hit it a little harder. But on other occasions, when the pen is farther away, you may want to chip with the wedge, or even with the 9-iron, to run the ball down to the flag. The technique is similar to chipping from the fairway, and the result can really be good. <laughs> Very simple. Well, definitely I want to see that one again.
Shots like that have become a Seve trademark over the years, and it's his ability to produce the unexpected and spectacular, not just during practice rounds, but when it counts, during the world's greatest tournaments, that has helped make his name. He first sprang to prominence in 1976 when, as a raw 19-year-old, inspirational shots like this helped him to equal second place with Jack Nicklaus in the Open. And the cheeky lad, he's run it through the middle and played an absolute gem of a stroke. What a great amount of pleasure this young man's given us this week. And throughout the years, that pleasure and sheer excitement has continued, fueled by his own very special brand of bravura golf. In 1979, he won his first major, the British Open. At 22, he was on his way, the youngest winner this century. From Europe, he went to America, and to the stunned astonishment of the Americans, he conquered there too. His victories at Augusta in the Masters of 1980 and 1983 set the seal on his reputation. But Seve is a committed European, and although nothing is sweeter than victory against the Americans, to the surprise of many, he remained based in Europe. And in 1984, he was rewarded with perhaps his greatest moment, with his second Open victory at St Andrews, the historic home of golf. 1985 saw another major triumph as his personal self-belief and motivation seemed to propel the whole European team to victory against America in the Ryder Cup. And throughout his years as a professional, Seve has done it. Today, in his early 30s, as one of, if not the dominating figure in the world of golf, he looks eagerly forward to a future as promising as the past has been rewarding. You have to be ready for all kinds of shots on the golf course. And sometimes you need to find something special. You can never practice too much. I always keep my trick shots for a tough day. Let's try the ball above the feet. First, let me show you how I do it. I open the club face a little bit. I aim a little bit to the right because the position. Also, I choke the club down the shaft. Then I try to stay a little high to compensate the slope. And then everything else is exactly as a normal shot. And also, I try to concentrate to make sure that my right hand don't rotate. It's supposed to go under. Otherwise, if it rotates too much, we will get too much overspin, which is not good. Now we have the opposite situation with the ball below our feet. Oh, we lost the beer. This time grip the club near to the top of the grip. Widen your stance, aiming to the left of the target to compensate the effect of the slope and the effect of the upright swing you will make. Here we find the ball lying against the cut of the rough. Don't worry, this is an excellent remedy which is pretty easy once you have a practice it. We call it the belly wedge. Take your sand wedge, choke down on the grip and aim at the middle of the ball. The stroke is firm and you hit the ball with the flange of the club. It is like a deliberate top. The ball will roll towards the flag like a pad. When playing the ball from a downhill lie, take a lofty club, probably the sand wedge, to compensate for the fact that the slope will have the tendency to take loft 
out of the club. Your left leg will carry most of your weight. Make a real effort to stay down through the ball. Okay. Now we have an uphill shot. I have the sandwich, but because the position, I'm going to change the sandwich into a pitching wedge. Why? Very simple. It's uphill, I have to put more weight on the right side. That means that I create, I will create more loft in the club. So I'm going to try to convert the pitching wedge into a normal sand wedge. Everything else is the same. Let's have a look. When playing from this kind of light, try to use your pitching wedge instead of your sand wedge to allow for the fact that the slow will effectively tend to add loft to the club. Of course, we don't have to play always with the sand wedge. Let's try a three iron and have some fun. To show us the secrets of chipping, Seve took us to the seventh green, which is situated by the side of a lake. That afternoon, a strong wind had started to blow at the Emirates course, but a golfing master like Seve doesn't allow such things to affect his concentration. <laughs> chipping is my strongest point. Basically, there are two types of shots the low one and the high one. First, let me show you the high one. Now we face a 40 feet chip shot. I'm going to choose the sand wedge. The reason for that is because the pen position is very close to the fringe. And also I'm going to choose the fringe as a reference point. Now let me show you the technique. First of all, I take the stance, the feet quite close to each other. The feet, the knees, the hips and the shoulders are all square but aiming to the left. Then I put the weight on the left side a little bit. Also I keep my cloud face a little open. I move my hands a little bit forward. Also the ball is set up to the left heel. Now I am ready to hit. I'm not going to use any wrist at all, just like a normal chip. And I'm going to try to carry the ball just over the fringe. Now we have a very similar shot, the same distance. But I'm going to choose a different club, the nine arrow. This club has less loft. The reason for that is because I have more green to work with and also I'm going to use the fringe as a reference point. The technique is very similar to the sand wedge. The only difference again is the loft. If we just take a closer look at those two shots again, we'll see, despite the different techniques, how similar the end results are. So either way can produce the desired result. Now we have a 50-foot shot, and I'm going to use the putter. Play the shot and think you are on the green. All you have to do is try to hit it a little bit harder. Using the putter is very important, especially when it's windy, because it's much more easy to control the ball. Especially when there's not much grass between the ball and the green. So, remember, a bad putt is better sometimes than a good chip. And it's the kind of shot that Seve is often chosen to use in tournament play. And here, from over 90 feet away, with impressive results.
The key to putting is consistency. Anyone can occasionally sink a great putt. The trick is to do it time and time again. Now we reach the green. Let's use the most important club, the putter. Let's start with the grip. I use that grip. I put the left hand on the top of the club. I take this finger apart. I take those four fingers from the right hand inside. And then I put this one in the middle of the club. And then I put that one down the shaft a little bit. That will make me using the wrist a little less. All right? This is the one I use. Other people, for, for example, are using the baseball grip. That means both hands separate. Some people are using the normal grip, which is the one we're calling the overlapping. And other people are using the left-handed cross, that way. But I have to tell you one thing. The most important is to feel comfortable. So it's no matter which one you're using, make sure you are comfortable over the ball. Here is my putter grip again, my normal reverse overlapping grip. The left hand goes on top of the club. Fold the finger on the right hand under the shaft and put your right thumb on top of the shaft and the index finger to the side. Most important, you must feel comfortable over the ball. Let me show you my personal setup. Let's start with the ball position. I put it straight to the left heel. Usually I have my feet a little bit open compared to the line of the hole. I move my hands a little bit forward to the left pocket. And also, if you notice, I raise the toll of the putter a little higher. The reason for that is just because I feel comfortable, that's all. Also, I try to make sure that my eyes, my head, is on the top of the ball. This way. That will help me on the takeaway and also on the follow through. And also, the weight it should be in the middle of both feet and also I try to put a little bit more weight on the left side to lock my stance. That will help me from moving on the takeaway and also on the follow through. Remember, when you have the head over the ball, don't change the direction of the eyes. You can have the eyes a little bit too much that way or the other way around. Make sure you keep the line straight at the hole. All right? Let's try and have a look. I play the ball of my left heel with an open stance. My hands slightly ahead of the ball and with my weight a little more on my left side. But whatever you do, Make sure you have your eyes directly over the ball at address. But first of all, let's find the sweet spot in the pattern. This is my pattern. Looks like that the sweet spot is right here in the middle, that most people believe, but it's not. To find out that, we have to pick up a ball and try to hit in the middle of the place that we think is the sweet spot. Let's find out.
In this case, as you can see, the paddle is moving. So that means there's not the sweet spot. It has to be a little bit more back. Let's try back. As you can see, the pattern is keeping in balance. There's the sweet spot. That's an important thing. Now, let's try from six foot. One thing that uh, we have to be aware is that on the takeaway, the length on the takeaway, it has to be the same as it is on the follow through. All right? And also, Another important thing is that on this situation, make sure that the takeaway also is straight back and straight forward. Let's try and see what happens. <laughs> now let's try 15 foot pad from the hole. We have to change a couple of things. One is that on the takeaway, the club goes a little bit more inside to a square to inside on the follow through. And then also we have to change the length on the takeaway and on the follow through too. By doing that, we will find the right distance. Let's try. Remember, the putter goes back and follow through on the inside with this stroke. Now we have a 30 foot pad, but we have to change one more thing. In this case, because the length, we have to use the wrist a little bit more to get the distance, all right? So instead of going everything in one piece, we will have to use the wrist a little bit more, like that. And also we have to remember, the line is important, but the length of the pattern is more important. Let's have a try. Not too bad from here. But remember, if you want to become a good putter, you have to practice. Let me show you how I do it. First of all, I pick it up a short distance, about four feet. Also, I have a bunch of balls. And I start practicing and concentrate on a couple of things. One, I try, I try to make sure that I have a stiff wrist all the time and also I try to concentrate on the length of the takeaway and on the length of the follow through. So after I hit a few balls and I have the right feeling, I keep moving in to 15 feet, 25 feet and 35 feet so and everything is the same. Remember, you have to practice if you want to become a great putter. Well, this is what happens if you don't read the greens properly. I'm going to show you how. First of all, I stay behind the ball, I bend myself, and I have to think what is going to be the speed. After I know that, I take a look and I say, well, from here it looks like a seven break, seven inches. Then I walk on the side and I take another look 
if I can see any reach or anything that can affect the direction of the ball. And then I look again from behind the hole, and it tells me that I'm right. Next, I look one more time from the other side to see if something is on the line. After that, I go back to the original position. I take another look. I concentrate on the speed. Then I think positive. And I hit it. Not too bad. You have to be able to read the break if you ever hope to be a good putter. But by studying the line and with practice, you will be able to make putts like this one. So remember, play for the break like I did during the British Open. A putt that will swing from right to left. Winning major championships was Seve's dream as a youngster while learning the game. Whatever your ambitions are, they can only be realized by hard work. And that means practice. But practice can and should be fun. And if you do it the Seve way, well, who knows? Maybe your dreams will come true. Well, that brings us to the end of the video. I hope you have enjoyed watching it as much as we have enjoyed making it for you. And hopefully you can go out there and play better and more natural golf, okay?